Hi, I'm Chef Rhea Jill, and this is How to Cook Like a Bajan. And as you can see, I am already hard at work. This is our celebration series, and today we are celebrating Christmas, which means you have to be up early, you have to be working hard in order to get all of your meats, fish, side dishes, starches ready for Christmas celebration. Basically, ham, lamb, and jam, right? I'm getting my bacon fat rendered out. I am going to be making a bacon and bear glaze for our Christmas beef this year. Hello, bacon and bear. I said the two things that you want to hear whenever you're talking about meat or food. Did I get it wrong? No, of course not. So, first off, I've got my bacon rendering out. I'm gonna use that later as well, but I'm really trying to get the fat because I have a prime piece of roast from BADMC, grass-fed, lush Bajan beef, yeah? And that's gonna come up later in the show. Before I can get to that though, let us take a peek at my farmer's choice ham. We're going to be roasting that off today. And the ham is also getting the bear treatment. Stay tuned. Now Barbados is known for our proper pork and Christmas, Christmas is ham. Ham and Christmas and Barbados. So let me just grab my farmer's choice ham. Let's get in. I'm gonna cut into the bag. Slip that off. Oops. No. Of course, we don't want to do our ham the same way everybody does their ham all the time. I know. Everybody puts on pineapple, maybe, and some cloves, and that's totally fine. But, like, what would be the fun in that? So, the major difference with how I'm going to set up my ham today, that I'm going to steam off my ham, my first step. Now, my ham. When I'm baking it, it's a two-step process. In fact, it's a three-step process, okay? I need a low, slow temperature. That just warms up the fat and puts it in the right mood, I find. It's supposed to make it, it makes it extra juicy, right? So I go for a low, slow temperature, maybe an hour, two hours, depending on how big the ham is, and I steam it out. Covered everything in the oven. Then, like the ham, the ham don't want to come out. Ah, there we go. Then, then, I like to bring the temperature up. Nice and high, 375 and up. That creates the crackling. So this skin on top of here. So the low slow temperature warms up the fat layer that's under, between the skin and the meat itself. And then, I bring the temperature up. When I bring the temperature up now, the skin becomes extremely crisp and that's how we get our crackling off this ham, yeah? Now, for the third step, I like to put a little glaze on, generally, just a little something. So we're gonna do something really quick, maybe just a little beer and honey on this one, but this ham is gonna be served with a chutney this year and that's the exciting part. So first, beer for the steam and at the end, a lovely chutney, yeah, a nice Bajan Christmas chutney. So it's going to be a little different, right? So before we can go into the oven, I'm just going to score very lightly. The skin, don't cut straight through the fat. You're not supposed to get to the flesh at all. You're just scoring the skin on the top of the ham in a nice cross hatch pattern. So I'm just going across the top. So we're going to get little cubes of crackling when we do this, it's gonna make that lovely ham pattern, crisscross pattern, little squares that everybody likes. And then you'll be able to take the crackling off very easily. So I'm just scoring right across. Everything looks good. Just gonna grab my baking pan. Whoa, 
It's so big. <laughs> it didn't want to come out. Okay. So as you can see, my roasting pan is going to allow my ham to sit nice and low. And I need that. I need that set up with the um, tray underneath because I don't want it to sit directly in the bear. I just want it to steam, right? That's what a good roasting pan does for you. So let me just grab this. Bring it over here. And over it goes. Yeah. I think two will be enough. Now remember, my favorite thing for Christmas is a shandy. So if there's some coconut water or lemonade or anything available, there might not be enough beer for the ham. Okay, so foil. <laughs> yes, Waitrose does have foil as well. Whoops. So just pop this open. One. Because they have many, many products. Grab all your stuff at Massey. Get your Massey points while you're at it. And apparently you can even get your mouth. But you just need to stock up. Because when you start cooking, you're gonna find that you just need a lot of stuff. All right, so I'm gonna tear here. That's one sheet. I'm gonna tear here. So that is nicely covered. Pull this one a little bit more to the edge. Beer and ham is officially Christmas. That's it. Not even December anymore. As soon as the beer and the ham come out, it's Christmas. It was the day of ham season, and all through the land, excitement was brewing because it's officially time for ham. From Farmer's Choice, of course. There is none other. For years, you don't know. It's Farmer's Choice, Panma Plata. It's a feeling we just get once this time comes around. It's joy. It's happiness. It's showing love with no bounds. It's tradition and memories in our hearts so profound. It's the food all I see. Time to back on the pounds. It's strolling through town, buying curtains from November, and then buying three hams, hoping them last till December. It's building community and giving back to those in need, and cherishing precious moments with our dear families. What laws? Ham season is ready to do something to me. It's deeply rooted in our pride and industry. But enough of these memories. We got enough to savor. It's time to bring home the ham and bring home the flavor. So bring home the flavor. Now, what we're gonna do is get our stuffing for our beef ready. So let's grab these mushrooms, let's grab this sausages, yes. So I've got some thyme, some mushroom, some sausages. I'm gonna cut my mushrooms first. So let's get those. Oh, uh, little tip, I don't generally wash my mushrooms, yeah? Um, because water mushrooms have such a high water content that sometimes washing them can destroy them depending on you know the circumstances so what I normally do with mushrooms is just wipe any dirt off or any any little bits and bobs that you find on it so I generally do that instead of washing because soaking them in water can mean that you end up with uh, no mushrooms so I think those are enough for what I need. Chop these up really quickly. Chop them again. Chop them again. Just a medium dice. I don't want them too small because basically since they're such high water content, um, if you make them too small, they'll just disappear. 
So let's get that. Chop them again. Same thing with these ones. I really like mushrooms. And of course mushrooms and beef go really well together. Um, one of the most classic combinations of course is beef wellington where you have your mushrooms and your, I actually think I have enough, your puff pastry and your mushroom duck cell in the middle. So for this one, taking the casing off the sausage. I don't want that. I don't want it held together. I actually want it broken up. So I'm just going to remove that casing. And that gets crumbled in there with this. So one thing about Eve sausages is that it's a very sustainable way of food production. Because with a sausage, you use up all the bits and bobs of meat, all the off cuts that would normally not be considered prime cuts and not be offered. So you grind them all together, you put them in the, in the casing, and that promotes what we like to call tip to tail butchery, where every piece of the animal is used up, and that's more sustainable than just taking an animal, taking out prime cuts, eating those, and never eating anything else. So this is, this is why we would support a product like this. So sausages, good, yes? I'm gonna run my stuffing, just a little heat, just to open up the flavors in this bacon fat, and also so I can have a little bacon fat in the middle of my um, beef roll. I need some later for the beef, so I'm gonna take off some of my excess. I also don't want my stuffing cooked, but I do just want to run a little, little flavor through it. I find that if you don't, the mushrooms are gonna what we call spring water. So you're trying to get some of that out before before we go to cook. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little thyme in. Let's just pop some thyme sprigs in. You know I feel about flavor at every step of the process, right? So get some fresh herbs in there. Our grass-fed beef is gonna be very earthy. Um, in comparison to grain-fed beef, grass-fed beef is leaner. So that's healthier, of course. And it also has more omega-3s in it. And it's got a deeper, richer flavor and color. So you know, that's what we have in Barbados, lovely grass-fed beef. This is from BADMC. And we want to do it justice. I just want some water out of the mushrooms, some flavor uh, released in the sausages. I am going to go just a touch of sage, because that's the flavor that's going on the beef. So I want to repeat the flavor. Not a lot of sage, but just like a pinch. Because that's going to be repeated in the glaze later on. Just a smidgen of salt and some cracked black pepper. I like to go in with my cracked black pepper, especially when it comes to beef, meat, mushrooms. They take a lot of pepper flavor-wise. Good, so I'm just gonna break up my sausage a bit more, just a little bit more. I don't want it totally broken up. I got a little color on there so that it will taste nice and it won't sweat in the middle of my beef. Same thing for the mushroom, but not fully cooked. Just break it up a little bit, get some of that bacon fat in there. You get some spices and some salt in. You know, I'm trying to actually mush the mushrooms into the sausage as I go. And that's enough. I don't want this to cook anymore. I'm gonna pull it off to cool. It's not fully cooked. It's just got a little golden brown color. All the herbs and the little spices, flavor has been released. We still need this pan. Do not turn off the stove. Do not let that pan go anywhere. Here we go. So, now it's time to open up our beef. Now I've gotten a lot of stuff from Carmita's for this season, and they do lovely tip to tail butchery. They really do. They use, they make burgers, they make meatballs, they make sausages, they give you cold cuts. You know, that, that's, that's the kind of sustainable farming that we want to support. Right, so we have our 
chunk of meat, as it were, right? I'm not keeping this fat cap. It's nice, fatty fat. If I was roasting this, I would keep it, but I'm not roasting it, so I'm gonna take this off. And we already have the bacon fat to replace the fat that we're removing from this cut of beef. So let's just get this. Beneath that, as you can see, there's silver skin, right? This is like sinew, and it's very chewy when it's cooked. So when you're prepping a nice cut of meat, you're gonna remove that as well. So it's Christmas. What are you doing for Christmas? Who's coming over, if anybody's coming over, because we're in COVID, so that's an interesting new development that we never had before. Christmas and COVID. I don't know if we even like saying those two things together, right? So I'm gonna start opening up my beef here. That's a nice step. I'm gonna take off this piece of silver skin as well. Let's just start it, gentle, yep. Come this way so you can see what you're doing. And lift it up. So I'm sliding the knife right along that sinew so that I only take off sinew and not all the meat or at least I tried so you don't want to waste anything so you just get all this white stuff out so that's the first layer so I'm going to come straight across and continue to open out my beef And I'm coming across, and I've come to another tip of my knife, lift it up. And don't get the beef in, just. So because um, sinew is part of the muscle that helps it to contract, when it's heated, it also contracts. So. If you cook your beef with that in it, parts of your beef are going to be scrunched up like this and other parts are going to be loose because they didn't have the sinew. So when you're preparing a nice prime cut of meat, you definitely want to get rid of as much of this silver skin as possible because it runs down through your cut of meat and it's going to give you some very strange reactions that you don't, that you don't want to have. So I, I basically flattened out my um, roast. I've actually got quite a bit, so I'm going to cut that down and maybe do two of them. So I'll just roll that. This has to be cleaned at the back too, so that's good. So this one is good. I don't like touching everything when my hands feel a bit sticky. So we're keeping it very, very simple with flavors because at the end, we're getting our glorious bacon and beer glaze. So we don't want anything to, to interrupt or to in any way get in, you know, between those flavors. You don't need anything else. It's, it's already stuffed and glazed, right? So I'm gonna salt on the inside, crack flat pepper. So just because the stuffing has a little um, seasoning on it, the beef has to get the same same treatment. Just a little bit all the way through so that when you take a bite, you don't taste seasoning and bland. Wait, who wants that? And don't be shy with the black pepper when it comes to beef. Beef can take a lot of black pepper. And this is sage, so we're gonna do some ground sage. It could be fresh sage. It's a very interesting, uh, I think it's a Christmassy flavor, but also the beef, the bacon, and the sage marry very well together. Um, sage is a very earthy kind of flavor. Don't put a huge amount on and I find that with the bacon it, it could just kind of lifts it adds a little something so let me get some of my stuffing give it a little squeeze whoops stop trying to get away All right so as you can see it's not fully cooked so it's actually very malleable which is what you want you want to be able to work it 
gonna put that in there we're gonna put that make sure you have enough so that your your curve your fold is supported all right so I bring my first piece of meat over and I'm gonna add more stuffing so it's gonna create like a little roulade like a little swirl right like a Swiss roll or something only you know with me ha all right so squeeze we're doing a lot here we are using up some sausage which is sustainable we're using some grass-fed Barbadian beef we're also using our locally made beer like we are righteous today yeah we are farm to table in it all the way to the oven right so I was gonna put a little thinner layer of this so that I can keep rolling just a little bit put it there and I actually can get all the rest of this in so my my roll looks nice and full so I'm gonna put a little bit more there and there yeah it's perfect over we go over we go everybody in and there we have it nicely tightly packed so now I'm just gonna rinse my hands off and because you, you just pick up a lot of liquid while you're working so I'm gonna give my hands another wash and I'm gonna come back and tie this bad boy up keep you and your family safe with Sol gas here are some helpful tips to keep you and your family safe when cooking with Sol gas Never tamper with the cylinder and only use the SOL approved regulator and a hose designed for use with LPG. Securely connect the regulator to the cylinder valve until it clicks into place and is properly fastened and secured. It is important to check the hose clips and the rubber hose to ensure they are in good working condition and properly secured. It is important to check your hose and regulator and change them as needed. Change your rubber hose every two years. Change your regulator every five years. If there are signs of damage to your regulator, contact an approved Sol gas distributor or a Sol service station for replacement immediately. Safety first with Sol gas. Excellent. Now for the tying up. I don't know where you would have acquired this skill unless you're a chef. <laughs> I have no opinion. I'm going to suggest that you get a nice long piece of string. I'm going to cut it off from here because I don't want to make my entire, contaminate my entire piece of string. So I'm just pulling off what I think I will need. Going to cut that and get that out of the way. All right, come up to the top, tie the first knot, pulls it in, helps it keep the shape. Go under. I'm just going to tie off this first one so it doesn't move and go anywhere else and I'm going to double knot nice and neat good from there you go under over under around and through if you grow up on Sesame Street eh? and you come back through here and you pull. You get your first one. Same thing again. Under, around, and pull. I want mine to be kind of close together actually. And then straight, perfect. Okay, so that's your last. So you have a nice straight stitch coming down. You go under again. Right, there you go. So let's get some bacon fat sorted out. So we got our bacon fat from our Farmer's Choice bacon that we rendered out earlier. We still have that, it's still coming back into play. But right now I have some nice, look at that golden deliciousness. 
It's just enough of that. Get my pan nice and hot, always with the seasoning. So we're going over with some salt on the top. We are going over with a pinch of sage again. That's enough, don't go crazy. Good stuff. We're going over it with our cracked black pepper. It's like snow <laughs> for beef. Um, presentation side first, almost upside down in the pan. So we're basically demonstrating all the best of butchery in Barbados. Oh, that rhyme. All the best of butchery in Barbados today. We have grass-fed beef, we have bacon, we also have sausages, all of this is very sustainable, and we have beer. Could it be better? If I use one more B word, I swear. <laughs> now while that's there, uh, we're also gonna season the other side. So sprinkle salt on here, and yet more crap black pepper everywhere. So, now, after we get this nice and brown, drop the heat just a little bit, we're gonna come back and start with our bank spare and bacon glaze. I found another bee. And we're gonna do our eggplant chutney because we're doing something a little different with the ham this year. Ooh, look at that color. Excellent. Get that other side. Put a bit of sausage back in. Put it. Color is amazing. The smell is amazing. Yeah, pretty much think we're ready to go in the oven. And then it's time to start our glazes and our chutney. Our glaze, sorry, and our chutney. Because we're only doing one. So this all. Color is good. Move over here to our soap pot. Mm. So, fat on the pot. Alrighty. Right. So, into the oven with this, and then the glazes. It's time for us to get our chutney, our Christmas chutney, and our glazes, and our glaze sorted for our roasted beef. So let me set up here. Now chutney is a condiment that we get from India. So you know there's a lot of Indian influence in our cuisine in the Caribbean. Um, one of the more important things about chutney is that the brown sugar in it and the, when you make a chutney, much like when you make a pickle, is that it preserves the ingredients. So you open a chutney, it's good for about two months, right? Um, any fruit, any vegetable can be turned into a chutney. Um, it usually goes with curry, but we're going to have it with ham because uh, it's got a very interesting flavor profile, lots of spices, so we're going to put the Christmas spices in this chutney. And basically you can make it with anything. And at Christmas you find a lot of eggplant is available, I've always found. So instead of just putting it in your vegetables, do not forget, I like to mention all the time, that you can keep your bits and bobs from your vegetables for compost. So you get a container, you start collecting those. Uh, yeah, I got all of it. Um, don't throw it away. Don't put it in the garbage. That's organic waste, and we want to compose, um, we want to compost that, sorry. So usually you get little chunks when it comes to chutney. Uh, size is up to you. They don't have to be too tiny because we're basically going to cook this down 
So between the vinegar and the sugar, your chutney lasts an indefinite amount of time and it tastes awesome. You get a lot of big kick of flavor when you do a chutney. So we are steaming our ham in beer. Yes, we are. Banks beer to be specific. Our local beery, our award winning local beery at that. And I love it too when they do like the handcrafted small batch beers and that kind of thing. So look out for those occasionally. I love it when they get different flavors. They get amber eels and get a little blonde beer and a stout, like it's good stuff. So got quite a bit I plant right here. I'm gonna do two. You can just dump these. Oh, and I like this for this reason. You can just dump these straight in the pot. That's fine. Pretty cool board. Um, onion. Now, I once worked with a Peruvian chef and I realized that they use the onion skin as well as the entire, the, the whole onion, the, the skin as well as the flesh. And what they normally do is take this onion skin, well, I'm gonna compost it, but they would actually boil it. So if you're making stock or something like that, you could put the onion skin in and get that flavor. Cause these layers are essentially like dried onion, right? So I thought that was fascinating. And a, a tip, so vegetable peels, so carrot peels, celery peels, onion, things you would normally put in the stock could actually be used to add flavor to whatever you're cooking, kind of without wasting anything, without buying a whole carrot. So you could get carrot for one thing and use the peels to add flavor in another way. So that's exciting and different. <clears throat> you know I'm always trying to use up as much of everything as possible and leave as little waste as possible so that we don't, so that we live a, a more sustainable life. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put a little water at the bottom, just a smidge, and I'm gonna pour over my apple cider vinegar. Um, it's a nice organic apple cider vinegar that I use. Pick that up at Massey. Use quite a bit of vinegar, yeah? Um, you want your liquid to just sit just slightly below your vegetables when you're getting your chutney ready. And then just like a load of sugar on top there. And we can turn on from here. Okay, so fresh herbs, I'm going to put in thyme. I also have a little bag here with some rum soaked raisins. They have their soaked in EXO. We made ice cream. I had a little bit too much raisins. I kept them and now they're going to live on in my chutney. Like, can't complain about that. And the sweetness, because chutney is, not, um, eggplant is not a fruit, right? So it's not particularly sweet. So I'm gonna add the sweetness that you would normally get from a fruit chutney. So like if you had done a golden apple chutney because it's Christmas um, and golden apples are in season, if you had done a pineapple chutney or something like that, it would have a lot more sugar content. So eggplant doesn't. So I actually added these rum soaked raisins to balance the acidity of the vinegar and all of these spices, right? So, and I just thought they'd be like a nice little pot. And since we're cooking with alcohol today, everything works in together. So we have that boiling down. And as I said, we're going to go in with our Christmas trio. Fresh spices from the market. I'm going to get star anise in there. I like odd numbers, so I'm going to put in five. And I have one stick of cinnamon. And then I'm just going to give this a good smack. <laughs> and uh, grate that in there. Let's just grab the grater here now and we're gonna grate some nutmeg in. A good, good set of nutmeg. Perfect. Let's pop that over there. Get this cleaned up. So we have everything set up for our eggplant chutney. I'm just gonna slide this back where it came from because 
Now I'm going to get on with my bear, Banks Bear and Bacon Glaze. I still have my pan from earlier that I used to saute, that I used to tear off my beef roulade. Perfect. It's still here. I'm still using it. I'm going to make the glaze for the beef in here. I still have my bacon fat. I'm going to start with that. I'm starting at a pretty low temperature, actually. So I'm going to grab just a little garlic. All right. I'm also going to go straight in with the bacon before that garlic gets a chance to color. Oh my goodness. I, I don't need to tell you the smell that just, whoa. All right, a little mustard. You know how you feel about that combination of mustard and um, beef? All right, we're gonna go grab this marjoram. It was on the other cart, but marjoram and mustard, another good combination that I find is very aromatic, tangy, tasty, All right? It's a glaze, so you need something sweet, so it kind of coats and has that sticky. So we are going in with our golden syrup, which is one of these fine sugar byproducts that we've been discussing on the show. So we're gonna find a use for it. Now, I've chosen the golden syrup simply, and I got my beer ready. I've chosen the golden syrup because it's a more neutral, a more neutral flavor. So if I had gone in with like honey, honey would impart a certain flavor to the dish. Um, and I don't want that flavor because I want the bear and the bacon to stand up. But I still want the, the sweetness and that kind of sticky residue on the glaze. So I went with golden syrup, right? So I went through all of that to tell you that I'm using golden syrup um, for this glaze. And now I'm gonna put in the bear. I'm gonna put a whole bank's bear in here and let this reduce. And by the time it's reduced back down to a nice sticky glaze, all the flavors in here would have been added, would have been infused into the um, glaze, right? So all of that is in. We will be right back to see the ham come out of the oven and get a little shine up. We will be right back to see the beef come out of the oven. And in a little bit, both the glaze and the chutney should be ready. Right, so here we are. Our beer and bacon, our Banks beer and bacon glaze, fully reduced. Cause that cut, oh, look at that color. Right, just ready to go on our beef, which is out of the oven. And here we have our chutney, also fully reduced. That's why we had to go away, because we had to give everything time to cook. Look at that. In fact, let's put some of that in a container. Turn the stove off. In a container, so you can see it. Appreciate oof, all the goodness. So our chutney, our eggplant chutney came up beautiful. And our glaze is nice and glossy. Gonna pour it over as soon as we cut into that beef. Lift it over here. We're gonna snap, 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 snap. Clear all the string out. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm suitably messy. Yeah, look inside at our sausage stuffing. Right there. Beer DMC beef with Banks beer bacon glaze. So, look at that. This, whoa, almost lost it. I'm gonna turn this bad boy this way so you can see the finish. 
and then right away over I'm gonna pour that glaze stove off <sighs> and we come to the Christmas I mean the good part I mean the farmer's choice I'm gonna lift that swing that around here look at look you hear that noise? Ting, 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 ting. Alrighty. Oh, oh, ho. I ain't taste it yet. <laughs> Lord Jesus, oh. Look at those laces. I'm ha and do you hear that? Just, just hear that crackling. You don't even taste it, you just hear it. So you, you know it's good. You don't have to eat that to know that that is the good stuff. Lift it off. I think y'all would agree that we've done a really good job today. I, I don't know who could argue about that. But let's put these magnificent slices. Right on the plate. So you can appreciate them. Right there next to that crackling. All right. So we put our ham there and our eggplant chutney. And there we have it, a beautiful take on Christmas. <laughs> this has been fun. Um, I'm gonna steal back some ham. Just gonna take a little piece and taste it with the chutney. So that you, you know that it's good stuff. You'll have to take my word for it. Mm. All those Christmas spices in there. You don't taste beer, but it's nice, soft, and juicy, the ham. Mm. That's definitely well worth taking all day to cook it. I'm just going to grab a quick piece of the beef. Oops. So I can taste that as well. So that I can reassure you that. It all is delicious. I do this for you, you know. I do this for you so that you can be sure of your recipe before you even try it. Quality control, that's what it is. So I'm gonna guess. Put a little glaze on here. Nice and brown and golden. And then I'm gonna taste it. <laughs> My mouth is too full to talk, but these are sacrifices we have to make for the job, you know what I mean? It's been a really great day. How to Cook Like a Bajan Season 3 is in full swing. Try the dishes, talk to us on any nation platform, go on Facebook, go on Instagram, Follow us on Fine Cuisine Magazine and see you next week. Hi, my name is Adrian Bryan. Today I'm going to be making a spin on a cocktail which is reminiscent of a peanut butter and jelly. Now this cocktail ties in with the Yuletide season because of its taste and its color. So let us begin. I'm going to get some ice all the way up. I'm going to be using a homemade solution, which is jamun, sorrel, and a cola tonic syrup. I'm going to use five ounces of this beauty. To add to that, I'm going to be using an infusion of Mount Gear Silver and Peanut. Using two and a half ounces, I'm going to float this 
So we get a layered cocktail. Now my garnish for this cocktail is what every bar and bartenders are using now. Traditionally, they're dehydrated citrus. I'm going to be using a cocktail clothespin. And there we have it, honor the gift.